using a least squares regression line to make predictions. So we know how to find a least squares regression line. We now want to be able to use it to make predictions based on our data, because that's the whole point of looking for association between variables, is to be able to use the explanatory variable to predict the response variable. Just because we can't say for sure that the explanatory variable changes cause the response variable changes, we can still use it as a predictor if there's obviously a good pattern or association between them. If we see that as this goes up, this goes up, that's a pretty good basis to make a prediction on. Assumptions when we're using linear regression, we are assuming that the association is linear. It won't work as well if we're trying to fit this to nonlinear data. You can, it won't work as well. We are assuming that there's no outliers. You can use it with outliers, it just won't work as well. And of course we are assuming that this is numerical data because we're doing this with scatter plots and that's numerical data. So it's the same for as if we're using R and R squared. So here is our example. In the study of the growth of a species of bacterium, we are assuming that the growth is linear. And over the days of the experiment, we are measuring the number of bacteria present. Find the least squares regression line equation and interpret it. So remember our least squares line. I've got my data in. Stat, calc, linreg. Remember, we might as well get in the habit of putting in the y variables so that it stores our line in Y1. Calculate. And I've got Y equals AX plus B. Y equals 206.25X plus 202.5. Sorry, my writing's a bit dodgy today. When it asks me to interpret it, in the context of the experiment or the story, the gradient is how much your y variable increases for every one increase in x. So this means a gradient of 206.25 in this context is the bacteria or the number of bacteria, the y variable, increase because it's positive by around 206 per day because X is measured in days of experiments days of the experiment and 202.5 is back when is the y-intercept so when X was 0 which is day 0 the start of the experiment so there were approximately 202 bacteria present at the start of the experiment. Now this is a slightly less helpful um, example in that it's time data. You'll often not be dealing with an experiment over time, but simply asking, say, five people the answers to two questions, in which case your y-intercept isn't going to be the start of the experiment, because there's no experiment, it's just going to be the theoretical y-value if x was zero. So in many of your scenarios, there's no, you'd never have x was zero, but that's the theoretical y-value when x is zero. So anyway, Use the equation to predict the number of bacteria present on day 13. So my equation is y equals 206.25x plus 202.5. And we want day 13. Now our days are the x variable. So x equals 13. Remember, we have to deal with the concept of interpolation, 
making predictions inside where the data is that I have, or extrapolation, making predictions outside where the data is that I have. So this is extrapolation. I'm outside my data, but not by very far. The further outside your data you go, the further outside you're extrapolating, the less confident you can be about your results. It's always a good idea before you get carried away to have a look at the scatter plot so you know what it's doing. Zoom 9. There's my scatter plot. That's beautifully linear appearing data. There's my line of best fit. Obviously, this is very strong correlation. Probably got an R of about 0.9. I didn't look when we were back there. So we can probably be pretty certain that this is going to be a quite useful prediction. There is a way of doing this on the graphics calculator, but honestly, it's harder than doing it by hand. If you want to learn the graphics calculator method, let me know. I will teach you. I think this is easier. Substitute the value in and solve. So this is x. So y equals 206.25 times 13 plus 202.5 hop into your calculator and type that all in. Wish I'd chosen easier numbers. And y equals 200, no, 2,883.75. It's a word question. Predict the number of bacteria present on day 13. Therefore, approximately, because it is a prediction, 2,884 bacteria will be present on day 13. So that's finding an x value. Sorry, finding a y value when we've got an x value. We can also be asked to use the equation to find out an x value given a y value. Find out what day, on what day, a measurement of 1450 bacteria was most likely. Write your line equation. The measurement of 1450 bacteria is y equals 1450. Substitute your values and solve. Again, there's a graphics calculator method, but it's hard. Ask me if you want. 1450 equals 206.25x plus 202.5. This is an equation with an unknown of x. It looks nasty, but honestly, it's no more difficult than, say, 3x plus 1 equals 13. There's x times a number plus another number equals a number. It's a perfectly simple equation. It just looks hard because there's all these nasty numbers. I just made this one up because it's kind of similar. Solve it with reverse bod mass. We want to deal with addition first instead of last. Get rid of 202.5. That's going to mean 1450 minus 202.5. This is 206.25 times x. So to get rid of that, we divide. So x will equal. 1247.5 divided by this. I've already got this number sitting up here. So I just need to go divided by 206.25. X equals 6.048, etc. Word answer on what day was a measurement of 1450 most likely. Round to the nearest whole number.
most likely on day six. Now, use the coefficient of determination, r squared, and your knowledge of extrapolation and interpolation to comment on the validity of your predictions. So this is where you've got to count, tie in a bunch of your knowledge. So this would get wordy. Prediction A was 2,884 bacteria predicted on day 13. Now, firstly, interpolation or extrapolation. This is extrapolation, which is less valid or less reliable. So we can be less certain that our prediction is correct. But if you wanted, you could say that was extrapolation not very far outside the data. Sorry about my writing today. Prediction. But what you can also look at is R squared. Because R squared, 99%, 98.9%, What is it? 98.9%. That means it's a really strong association. We expect that it's very easy and we can be very confident in using one of these variables to predict the other. Above about 30%, you'd probably say it's, signific it's significant enough to make a prediction something this high, we're saying we can make a really good prediction with this data because most, if not all, of the variation in the number of bacteria is predicted by the day we're on. So we can be very confident in our prediction. If we were talking about the validity here, we're within our data at day six, so we would say that this is interpolation and thus more likely to be a piece of uh, prediction that we're confident in. So the extrapolation does depend how far outside your data is, and you definitely look at the coefficient of determination as well.